Today, we're going to discuss identity. Now, there is a concept in modern sociology called self-categorization theory. And according to self-categorization theory, and I quote, as shared social identity becomes salient, individual self-perception tends to become depersonalized. That is, individuals tend to define and see themselves less as differing individual persons and more as the interchangeable representatives of some shared social category membership. Now, what is this saying? It's saying that the more conscious we are made of our social identities, the more depersonalized we become. That is, the less we view ourselves as individuals, and more as members of a group that shares that identity. For example, and again quoting from the literature, when an individual man tends to categorize himself as a man in contrast to women, then he, really we, tends to accentuate subjectively his similarities to other men and reduce his idiosyncratic personal differences from other men and enhance perceptually his stereotypical differences from women. In other words, the more you can make a man conscious of his identity as a man as opposed to a woman, the more pressured he will feel to adhere to stereotypes of masculinity and avoid stereotypes of femininity. Now, it's my contention, I think it's fairly self-evident, that in our time we have become increasingly depersonalized in this way. That is, we have increasingly lost touch with our perception of ourselves as individuals, and instead tend to view ourselves more and more as members of groups defined by stereotypes. Personal identity, that is, has more and more been overtaken by social identity, or collective identity. How exactly this has happened is a large subject, but a few things come to mind. The standardization of life, the leveling of organic social structures, the homogenization of the population, the growth and power of advertisement and entertainment, the rise of social media and the internet, the bureaucratization of the workplace, the advent of political strategies founded on the manipulation of social identities, all these have played their part in this general trend. Now, one consequence of this trend is that we as individuals have become more and more enslaved to stereotypes. Whereas in the past, a man may go about his life without being constantly and intensely conscious of his social identity as a man, as opposed to a woman, Today, that same man has become extremely self-conscious of his own masculinity and extremely concerned about whether or not he measures up to the various stereotypical formulations of that identity. And the longer this process continues, the more shallow and crude these stereotypes become. Today, masculinity, for instance, means little more than sheer animal virility, so that if you're not walking around with an erection 24-7 and grunting and screwing every female you see, or if you don't have the muscle mass to lift up a car, you're probably going to feel a little insecure as a man. And the same goes with femininity. Women today seemingly feel compelled to accentuate and emphasize and reveal every feminine physical characteristic they possess in order to conform to the shallow and rigid stereotypes 
of their social identity as women. So that we have a thriving industry of cosmetic surgery that will turn you into a more stereotypical representative of the female sex. Now, as this process continues, as we become more and more enslaved to and obsessed with our social identities and their associated stereotypes, the more we will see attempts to break free from the psychic and social constraints they impose upon us. But such attempts are often self-defeating. For example, if a man today feels that he cannot measure up to some stereotypical form of masculinity, he may suspect that he is not really a man. Perhaps he is something else. Perhaps he is gay or a woman. And yet, as soon as he tries to escape from the stereotypical straitjacket of his previous social identity, he discovers that his new social identity comes with another set of stereotypical standards, just as rigid and shallow as the ones he left behind. If he is gay, suddenly he must define himself against those who are straight and live some stereotypically gay lifestyle. If he is a woman in a man's body, suddenly he must define himself against those who are cisgender, and so forth. The cycle never ends. On the other hand, we have increasing numbers of people who, frustrated in their attempts to live up to the various stereotypes and collective patterns opposed upon them, simply drop out of social life altogether choosing to live instead a life without any identity at all, rather than continue to fail in the rigid standards held over them. So, what is the solution for this unpleasant situation? Obviously, the forces that have pushed us down this path, some of which I mentioned earlier, are vast and multivariate. They are difficult to change. But on an individual level, first and foremost, you must simply understand that this phenomenon is happening, that it's real, and that you are not immune to its effects. Then you can begin to identify when you are led, subjectively, from a personal identity perspective to a social identity perspective. For example, you may come across a headline like this or this. Now these headlines, if you let them, immediately draw you into group consciousness rather than individual consciousness. You stop thinking like an individual, you lose that detachment, that perspective, and you start thinking like a member of a group you start thinking in a very emotional, very us-versus-them frame of mind. And this is what the sociologists mean by depersonalization. And if you go on social media, or any forum on the internet really, you will see this depersonalization in action. For example, we'll just take a look at this. Or this. Consuming content like this may make you feel good for a short while. It may make you feel like you have an identity, an in-group, a community, and so forth. But what you're really doing by absorbing this kind of thing is eroding away the habit of thinking of yourself as an individual. And the more you lose that habit, the more you will be dominated by your social identities and their associated stereotypes.